today we are beginning the Finvi Quilt Along. I'm so, so excited to start this. If you have missed all the messages and videos and things like that, uh, this is Fenvy Quilt and it is a beginner friendly quilt pattern and we're breaking it up into five weeks and making this quilt together. So if you get signed up, all the links are below. If you get signed up, um, you will receive an email each week with uh, everything you need to do. Tasks, tips, videos, demos, etc. All of that. You can find the pattern at meanderandmake.com and again, it's below. So I had somebody um, ask me, or actually I had three people ask me this week about the name of the pattern. So it, this information is in the pattern, but I thought I'd just dig into it a little bit right here. Fenvi is a German word for wanderlust or far sickness. Um, and when I named it that, or when I wrote this pattern, I was designing my Someplace Grand fabrics, which is the cover quilt. Uh, someplace grand and it was it's all about traveling and things like that so that's kind of where the name comes from it's a really beautiful word it's pronounced Fenvy I hope <laughs> according to Google it's pronounced Fenvy so hopefully I'm not butchering that um, German word all right today is week one and what we are gonna do this week is get everything cut and pre pressed, cut, and then organized. So that's our task, that's all we're doing. I thought we'd start with talking a little bit about fabrics and then move on to cutting fabric. I'm gonna show you a little demo of cutting fabric just in case you've never done it before. I like to make sure I do these demos so if you are an experienced quilter, you know what you're doing, you can skip some of these demos. Um, although sometimes you pick up tips and tricks along the way. I know sometimes I think I know a thing and then I see somebody else do it and then I learn, oh, that's something better. So sometimes I don't. <laughs> so it just kind of depends. Uh, so feel free to skip these demos and things like that. I will talk about prizes, schedule, everything else after we talk about fabrics. So what you're looking at on the screen is the Fenvy quilt. All right, so this is version one. This is version two. These are the exact same fabrics used in both versions. Obviously yours may look different if you are using different fabrics. Um, but version one and version two, the foreground and the background are in different places. So page two of your pattern goes into this, but I still keep getting questions about it. So I just thought I would um, kind of explain it here on, on, on the first little part of this quilt along. So in both versions, the white or cream is the background. So in version one that we're looking at now, the background is right here and the foreground it's right here and right here. All the colored parts are foreground, all the white parts are background. In version two, it's a little bit reversed, but not, it's a little bit more than reversed, but again, but again, the white or cream parts are background and the colored parts are foreground, but you also got a little bit of background right here. In both versions, they're mixed. So you've got two fabrics plus your background in each block. Version one, very scrappy. Version two looks clean. So whatever you're in the mood for. I've made this quilt in both versions now and I love both of them. I find it easier for version two to pick out the background. Version one, I've, I'm finding it a lot more difficult to pick out background. And you might have noticed that if you purchased a kit from the shop, uh, that I've had a lot more op color options for version two than version one. And that's just because I think this one's easier to choose that background, whereas this one's a little bit more difficult. Totally up to you. Totally whatever your mood is or whatever fabrics you've got going on. All right, so to get started, we're just going to get our foreground fabrics ready to cut. So all these low volumes, each one is going to be a different block. And what I want to do is just prepare them for cutting. If you're making the 72 by 72 inch, you're working with nine different fabrics. If you're making the 72 by 96, you're making 12, you're, you're using 12 fabrics. And if you're making the big size, 96 by 96, you're working with 16 fabrics. So up to you which size you make, I'm making that middle size. So I'm gonna have 12 half yards uh, to, to get ready. And what I'm gonna do is I'm using starch and I just like to give the fabrics all a good spray with starch and then give them a little press before I start cutting. And this starch makes fabrics um, a little bit crisper 
it makes you have less cutting errors uh, and then it, they just piece so much better. I mean, I, I feel like I always have a uh, better precision when I uh, use starch. So I'm going to whip through all these fabrics and get them all uh, starched and pressed. And then I'm gonna meet you um, at the cutting mat. So now we are cutting. And everybody's got their own way of cutting, right? So I'm just going to show you mine, just in case you are new. If you've watched any of my videos before or taken any classes by me, then you've seen me do this. But I like to use my cutting mat in both of its directions. So you've got the long piece facing me here, and then I've got the short piece facing me here. So when we're cutting fabric, we've got cutting our strips and then subcutting our strips, right? So. I always cut from this angle and then when I need to subcut, I go to this angle. And I do that just because I like the flow uh, and the fit of the fabric. I'm using a 24 by 36 inch mat and it just kind of works better when I do it like this. So that's what I've got going on. I'm using a 60, uh, I'm using a 60 millimeter rotary cutter, the big one. I like this rotary cutter because I can cut more a fabric at once. I can cut multiple layers. If you aren't comfortable cutting multiple layers, don't. Just do what is fit for you. But if you're looking for recommendations or things like that, that's what I use. And we sell this one in the shop at meandrewmake.com. I'm using my big ruler, 24 inches long by six and a half. It really doesn't matter what kind of ruler you use. Um, anything that you want to use is going to work, but it's gotta be at least 24 inches long or it won't fit the uh, length of your fabric. So, I've got that, I've got this, I've got my mat, I'm ready to go. So, I usually cut about three to four layers and I'm gonna show you this demo again when uh, I've got the camera pointed down so you can see what I'm actually doing but I also wanna show it to you this way so you can kinda see it from both angles. So everybody cuts, well, I know two ways of cutting fabric. One way is to use your ruler for measuring, and the second way is to use your mat for measuring. You're either hardcore one way or the other. I've never seen people be able to flip-flop both ways. I use my mat for that. The only thing I'm using my ruler for is to hold on to my rotary cutter, right? To use it as my... Uh, baseline. Um, I'm using the measurements on my mat to actually decide how big I cut my fabric. I know that a lot of people say sometimes the mat isn't accurate, but that's usually only true for old mats from back in the day. These new mats that everybody uses, they have accurate measurements. Alright, so I'm getting all my fabrics set up I like to cut with the selvage right here in front of me and um, I'm placing you know all of my fabrics across the line that I actually want to cut on so that's what that is going to look like just to get myself a straight edge and then I can um, have a you know perfect cuts from that point forward so mat so ruler rotary cutter and then I'm going to place the ruler on the mat or on top of the fabric. And, the, and again, I'm using my mat as my source of measurement. So if you're doing this a different way, that's okay. So if you're doing this the, the other way, that's okay too. You know, cut how you wanna cut, but this is for people who are looking for some guidance in their cutting. You're cutting obviously on the edge of your ruler, but when your eyeballs are going to actually look one inch away from the edge. So looking at that one inch line, I'm gonna put that one inch away from the line on my mat. So we're looking both places, we're lining up the one inch with the one inch, right? So I'm gonna take my hand, put some weight, cut, and then I lift my hand and do it again, just like that. And we're just cutting off those little edges like that, and we're getting ourselves a nice clean edge. I'm gonna show you this one more time uh, from a different view. Okay, so again, I'm gonna stack up my fabrics. I like to cut three or four at a time, but here's what this looks like from this angle. I've got my selvage down here 
uh, right beside myself. And then I'm over, I'm gonna cut on this line right here. And if you look pretty closely, you can see that it's my 20 inch line on the mat. And I wanna make my cut on the 20 inch. So I wanna make sure that I have uh, this edge across it so that when I go and cut myself my clean edge, uh, you know, it's, it's all the way across it and it's overlapping that line so that I get that nice clean cut. So that's what I'm doing now. And then I'm gonna have, I'm gonna stack up four layers of fabric here. And again, if you feel comfortable cutting two, cut two. If you feel comfortable cutting three, whatever makes you feel the best. Sometimes if my blade isn't as sharp, I'll cut three, but most of the time, most of the time I'm cutting four. All right, so I've got all my selvages, you know, right down here. I'm gonna put my ruler here. And all right, this is what, this is kind of what, this is what I really wanted uh, to show you. Right? You're looking at the ruler in two different places. You're looking at it down here and you're looking at it up here. I'm not sure if you can see that in the video. And you want to make sure that it's overlapping the bottom of the fabric here and the top of the fabric right there. See? And we're going to be cutting right here on this 20 inch line with our a rotary cutter bumped up against our ruler. But when I look at this when I want to make sure that I've got that ruler in the right place to get my good cuts. I'm looking at this one inch line and I want to make sure that this one inch line on my ruler is on top of one inch from where I want to cut on my mat. So in my case I'm cutting on the 20. That means I want to line my one inch ruler line up with my 19 uh, mat line and I want to make sure those are flush down here and all the way back here at the top. When I have it flush, I put some weight on my ruler with my hand, get my other hand with my cutter, and I usually cut till about halfway and then I shift my weight, you know, down here and cut again. And that, that is the best way I know how to cut fabric. And um, I spend a lot of time getting all these little rituals, if you want to call them that, uh, learned so that I can have better piecing, more precision in my quilts. The more precise you are, the less frustrations you'll have as we move along through this quilt. If this is your first quilt pattern you've ever made, uh, or you or you found yourself frustrated, getting your cutting accurate is, is one of the biggest things that you can do to make yourself have less frustration. All right, when I'm ready to cut my first lump, my first strip, and what, what a strip is, just in case you don't know, is it's just one of these long rectangles of fabric that is double, double folded in the case of this quilt. We'll make our first quilt, we'll make our first cut, and what I wanna do, my first cut is three and a half inches on, for what I'm making. And I wanna take my line 20 here, where the edge of my fabric is, and just count three and a half inches. One, two, three and a half. And then I line up the lines on my ruler with the lines of my mat. Put my weight down, shift to the other side, boom, we're cut. And that is, you know, that's a strip. Okay, right, so I've got my pieces, you know, cut, my strips cut. And instead of going and automatically moving to sub cutting and starting that, I like to just wait until I get all the strips cut and then sub cut. Definitely do what you feel most comfortable with and what keeps you the least amount of confused. Um, but I just like to do it this way. So that's what I'm doing. I'm gonna stack all like size strips together and then just kind of move them out of the way. And then I'm gonna get to my next uh, fabrics. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get everything cut out of all of these half yards for the rest of the quilt and then we will start sub cutting together. And I've shifted over here uh, to this side of the mat just because it just works out better with the length of fabric. That's the only real reason I have for doing it this way. You've got different strips getting cut up into different amounts. So right now we're working with one size and you're, you might be making a different version than me. So there's version one and version two and they have different things going on with their, with the, with their sizing. I mean, they're basically two patterns in one. So I'm not gonna tell you, you know, the numbers right now, but you can see that what I'm doing is I'm getting the selvage on the other side of the line like that. 
So I have my selvage, I'm gonna cut right here, right? And I have my selvage on the opposite side. So that's what you wanna do. And you kinda wanna make sure, I'm stacking three to four deep, and you wanna make sure, you know, that all your selvages are on that opposite side. Some selvages are thicker than others, so I like to pay special attention to it because, um, you know, that's one of the reasons why I don't just grab up a whole stack of these and place them down because they all have different, you know, selvages. So just kind of do the best you can, but you will be irked, or at least I'm always irked, if some of my selvage gets into my piece. Like if I cut a square and then, you know, an inch of it is selvage, oh my gosh, talk about being mad. <laughs> So I want to make sure I don't do that. So that's what the caution is about. And then I actually have a smaller ruler that I use for sub cutting. Let me get it out. All right. I have this smaller ruler that I always use. And you can, you know, if you want to use a big ruler and fill up your whole mat, that works. You, you know, you could still use this ruler, fill up the whole mat, but I've got this camera on my table, so I'm not able to do that. So what I do is just line up the, again, you're lining up the lines on your ruler with the lines on your mat, and then you cut those selvages off, right? Just like that. And now I've got this nice clean edge, and I can go through and cut whatever I need to, just like that. That's it. Let's get all of our foregrounds cut, cut up, and then we'll move on to background. Okay, I have finished cutting all my foreground. Um, it's way over there, or I would show it to you. But now, um, we're gonna get our background ready. So, I'm using raw gold, one solid fabric. It's gonna work the same way. So we're gonna get it starched, pressed, and then cut into strips, and then subcut. Or, whatever you like to do best. So, um, let me get this background sorted. It's always such a big, huge piece. So I usually keep it double folded. Um, I make, like I said, I'm making that 72 by 96 inch size. So um, it's four and a half yards for me. If you're making the, let's see, if you're making the 72 by 72, you've got three or three and a half. So big, huge piece. And I just kind of work through it the pressing of it, uh, you know, like I said, I saw, you know, it's folded, but I've got both ends right here, both of my ends right here. And then I just give it a spray like that and then press. And again, this, when I learned to starch, and I'm using steam in my iron too, by the way, when I started doing this, it just kind of changed up my precision game. Everything started coming out the right size. Everything started, you know, just fitting together. So that's the way I always do it. And I'm just gonna roll this up a little bit, move everything out of my way. And then just kind of go down the line, pressing this big, huge chunk. And snowballs, which we will get into next week, snowballs are just a tiny bit finicky. So anything that you can do, you know, to make those easier, I say go for it. So what I'll do is I'll continue doing this all the way down to the bottom fold, and then I'll flip it over so that I'm actually doing the other side. But however you work, work that way. I will meet you back here when I have it all completed, all cut, everything done and ready to go. All right, so you should have a little something that looks like this. Now yours may look a little bit different from mine if you're making uh, version one. I'm making version two again. So this is what version two ends up looking like. You've got three sizes of background and you've got four sizes of foreground. Now version one again looks different, but now that we've got everything cut, we wanna get everything organized. And we're gonna, we want to get ready to sew next week. So we're gonna divvy up everything into blocks. So if you are making version one, you're gonna turn to page five. And if you're making version two, you're gonna turn to page nine. And what you're looking at up there, at the very top 
of those pages, it says each has and how many blocks, and then it says pieces needed per block. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna get our A's and our B's ready. I'm not gonna get background ready because I feel like that would be too much. Plus it's really obvious what size everything is. So I'm gonna put the background aside and not use those for right now, but I am gonna get ready for the A and the B. It doesn't matter whether you're making version one or version two, they both have two different colors in them. So you've got your center uh, color and then you've got your outer color. So the center can be just one of these. If you're making that smaller size, you've got nine of these center squares. If you're making the middle size, you've got 12. And if you're making the large size, you've got 16. But I'm gonna go ahead and put these out. This multiple versions in the same pattern has caused so much trouble, <laughs> but um, it really is versatile so that you can, you know, make what you want to make. All right, so these are my B squares. Let me make sure they're B on version one too. Yeah, so these are B squares and they account for each square is a block within this quilt, all right? So, now that we've got B laid out, let's lay out our A pieces. So go ahead, according to you know what your what your what version you're working on, um, you're gonna lay out your your all the pieces for your A. So let me do that really quick. All right. So that's kind of what this looks like. We're just mixing two colors per block, um, and they, there's no hard rules for which colors to mix. Um, just do what feels right to you. And I'm, I am trying to make sure that I've got contrast on it. All of mine are low volume, but I'm trying to pair like a calm low volume with a busier one or, you know, look at scale. So large and small. Um, this is, this one's pretty good contrast there. And then just, you know, just do the best you can. Once you have all the pieces, and again, those are on page nine for, for version two and five for version one. Once you have everything you need to go, like this is a whole block, then I just put one of these binder clips on it just to hold it in place. So that next week when we make three or four blocks or however many you are making, you'll just grab how many of these that you need for your blocks. It's just kind of a way to go ahead and get things organized where you don't have to be constantly doing that throughout this quilt along. We're doing it one time and then we'll be ready to go. So I'm gonna sit here and get these done. Okay, so that is that. If you need clips, if you don't have clips like this, you can find them in the shop. If you don't wanna buy something special just to clip things together like I'm doing, uh, I, I've used clothespins in the past and they work great. So clothespins, whatever you got, um, even if it's just stacking them on surfaces, uh, either way, I'm only having to organize this one time and then I'm ready for the whole quilt along. All right, again, I didn't organize the background fabrics because I just didn't feel like I needed to. Um, when we make our blocks, I will grab, you know, I think our first, uh, next week, uh, which would be the second post in this quilt along, I'll just be grabbing four of these to make my blocks and leaving the rest behind. And then I'll grab what I need in background. All right, I get really, really overwhelmed with things sitting around. <laughs> So I got me these boxes, and if you've quilted along with me before, you've seen them before, but they're just plastic boxes that I can stack up in the closet. And I'm just gonna go ahead and put everything I need uh, in here, including, including my pattern. And then next week, when I'm ready to, uh, we'll go with week two, I'll just grab what I need from this box and, um, and then move on. And that way this is out of sight, out of mind, and it goes stacked up in a closet on top of other boxes, just like it with other whips. <laughs> okay, so that's it for organization. All right, that was a lot of cutting. That was a lot of cutting and a lot of pieces. So if you need to break that up into multiple days, remember that you have an entire week to cut your fabric and organize it. So break it up however you need to. A little bit each day is perfectly fine. Um, all the links to all the supplies that I used in this video is down below. So if you need, if you have a question about something I used, you can probably find a link to it below or send me an email. That's fine too. I'm happy to answer any questions, comments, or anything you have. So put those in the comment section, wherever you're seeing this video. All right, next 
Thursday, one day before the next week's post comes out, uh, I'll be giving away two $50 gift certificates over at Meander and Make to be eligible for these gift certificates. You need to post your progress of cutting and organizing on Instagram using the hashtag FenvyQAL and be following all of our sponsors. There's only five, so uh, and their information is all in the email I sent you this morning. The winner of those giveaways will be announced on Instagram in a post on Thursday. Um, if you are not subscribed to be a participant of this Quilt Along yet, get subscribed and you'll get this information delivered right into your inbox. All right, so I think that's all that I have for you this week. Um, like I mentioned before, if you have any comments or questions, just leave them in the comment section below and I will answer them in next week's video. Um, I cannot wait to start vlog making. You can't get here soon enough. I will see you next Friday. Mm -hmm.